So you want to sell your business. Uh, let me tell you one of the biggest issues that we see from a tax standpoint whenever somebody goes to sell their business. Uh, but first off, my name is Ray. This is Andrew with REH CPA. Uh, we put out a lot of these videos uh, on YouTube. So if you like what you hear today and you want some more information, then make sure you hit the like button and also hit that uh, hit that. Um, notification notification bell. bell. Thank you, Andrew. That <laughs> notification bell to let you know when we have a new video out. Anyways, uh, back to our topic, Andrew. So what is it? So a lot of times when we get uh, uh, somebody who sold their business, it's usually after the fact. We prefer that they can come to us first before they sell so we can kind of go over some of these things. But a lot of time it's after the fact. What, what is one of the biggest problems that you see uh, from a business sale that we would like to try to pe get people in front of? Yeah, so there's two ways to sell a business, and a lot of it revolves around an asset sale. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be an asset sale. So when you sell the, and that's essentially what it is, you sell the assets of your company. So the other way would be a stock sale where you're just selling the stock, the shares of the business yeah. or an asset sale. Yeah, and a lot of times, I mean, we see those some, but they're just not the norm. Not so, as, yeah. So asset sales, you, you that's really what it is. You sell the, the computers, the chairs, the furniture, the fixtures, machinery, equipment, all of the assets of the company. And of that calculation, there is what's called goodwill. So goodwill is all of the intangibles. That's going to be your name, your brand, your reputation, customer list. All of the intangibles of your company is made up of goodwill. So the biggest issue we see is when somebody sells their business for, let's say, a million dollars, sold all the assets, all the equipment, everything, a million dollars, got it. But they did not say, well, how much of that sales price is going to be allocated to goodwill? Because it's really important to know because goodwill has... Um, more preferred tax rates on the gain. There's you get it's tax long term capital gain. Asset, right? Exactly. So so if you sell a business for a million dollars and nine hundred thousand dollars of that is to goodwill, where then you got nine hundred thousand dollars worth of income there that's taxed at a long term capital gain rate. Whereas if you have it the the opposite where you have nine hundred thousand applied to the fixed assets that you've depreciated through your business, you've taken tax deductions for, you have to there's there's an ordinary income recapture piece to it. So all that means it's is you're going to pay higher taxes on that because it's all ordinary income, or there's a portion of it that's going to be taxed as ordinary income, and um, it's, it's just not a great tax treatment for this for the seller. Right. So, so if you're if you're selling the business, you really want a high goodwill valuation right. and a smaller valuation on the equipment portion. Correct. That's always kind of the the game there, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Correct. So and you know the the buyer wants the exact, exact opposite. Exact opposite. So you're you're pinned against each other so you got to get agreed on how you want to treat it, but the buyer wants the exact opposite because again using the million dollar business sale as an example, if you buy goodwill for 900 grand, you have to amortize that over 15 years. You have to write that off against your income over, over 15, 15 years. years. So it takes a long time to kind of recoup that. Right. Whereas if you have nine hundred thousand dollars allocated to equipment and tangible items, there's you, you oftentimes you can depreciate those even in like the first year. Right, you could one seventy nine so, that for a lot of it in the first year. Right, so so you both pinned against each other, but the biggest thing is you you both have to agree. It's not like right. both sides have to agree. And the IRS, and the IRS the same is way. silent on it because they don't care. Yeah, because two people have to agree. If one gets if one gets it the way they want it, the other person didn't. So they there's yeah. a balancing uh, effect there that the IRS just doesn't. Yeah, as long as both part all, all the IRS wants to know is that both parties agreed to how it's going to be treated, and we have to actually attach a tax form to your tax return saying all of this information, how it was split up, and how you have the to report the business that 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 purchased. So exactly. that way, because they go look and make sure they filed the same form. So you want to be telling the same story. You do. So it's, just, I mean, the biggest thing is just making sure when you're going through the process with your attorney, make sure that your attorney, you know, spells that out in the paperwork that, that the business was sold allocation. for a million dollars. Right. Here's your asset allocation. Equipment, 900000 Goodwill, 100000 Just It's got to be spelled out in there. It makes our life easier. It'll make your life easier. So we're not trying to go back to somebody after the date to say, hey, how do we want to do this? Because yeah, that is getting not, that done afterwards is just not, gonna not good. It's, it's right. not not where you want to be. It's not the situation you want to be in. So right. food for thought. Just try to make sure you break that out. On awesome. The front end. Well, I appreciate it, Andrew. Uh, again, this is Ray Halstead, Andrew McMillan with RHCPA. Thanks for checking us out.